Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. We, the daughters and sons of him who built the valleys and plains, praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we come to celebrate this Mass. We first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that we may experience at all times the fruit produced by the Paschal observances through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We set sail from Troas, making a straight run for Samathras, and on the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, a leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We spent some time in that city. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate along the river, where we thought there would be a place of prayer. We sat and spoke with the women who had gathered there, one of them a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Terithia, a worshiper of God, listened, and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she offered us an invitation. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed on us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. Let the glory of all his faithful Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. I read him from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this, so that you may not fall away. They will expel you from the synagogues. In fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God. They will do this because they have not known either the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their hour comes, you may remember what I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So our first reading today, we hear in the chapter 16 of Acts that Paul and his companions are traveling. And this is almost written as a kind of like a, a travel log, a journey, where they're talking about different cities and places, all of which existed, all of which can be shown very historically on the map. And we see that they come to Philippi. And on the Sabbath, since they're in a Roman colony where there is not a large Jewish population at all, they go by the river to pray. And this was a custom of Jewish people who lived, who didn't have a synagogue, they would meet by the river to pray. And so they go by the river to a place where they thought would be a place of prayer, and they meet this woman named Lydia, who is a dealer in purple cloth. Now, we, don't, we hear that she is a worshiper of God, meaning that she is Jewish. But Lydia is not even close to being a Jewish name. And it's very peculiar because she's a dealer in purple cloth, but there's no mention of a husband. In fact, she herself invites them to her household. Women back then really didn't own households, really didn't own businesses. Her husband had died and somehow left it to him. So she must be a widow of a Jewish man, and they were dealers in purple cloth. And she has continued on the household. But this woman is in a very unique position because back then this didn't happen. And she prevails against them to have them come and stay at her household. And again, very peculiar, being invited by a woman to come and stay at her house. So she must be a woman of extremely good repute that the apostles would do this because this could have undermined all of their ministry in that entire area, if this was scandalous in any kind of way. But isn't it interesting? And she says, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my home. If you think I'm a believer, if you see me as a good person, come and stay. And you know, I, I have had this kind of invitation many, many times in ministry where people have offered to me their homes for Mass or you know, offered me to, offered to cook or to help in church. And oftentimes I say, if you consider me a believer, let me do this for the church. If you see faith in me, let me do this. If you think I'm a good person, let me do this. And I oftentimes think of Lydia when people put it that way because it's hard to say no, because if you see the fruit of faith in them, how can you say no? How can you refuse their offer? And I think St. Paul is very much in this mode. And of course, we see that Lydia actually is greatly revealed by the Orthodox Church, by the Greek Orthodox Church. In fact, her title is equal to the apostles, equal in holiness, equal in her effect and blessing on the early church in the fruits of her ministry. We don't hold her as quite revered in, in the Eastern Church, but, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, in the Western Church, but in the Eastern Church, she is very much revered that way. Even Lutherans review her for some reason. I, I, don't, I don't quite get that, but they do. And we see her as a saint. Um, she has a feast day, but we don't really pay that much attention to her. But I think the Orthodox do because so many of their churches were built up because of the overwhelming generosity of key people in these towns at that time. And that's really what made the difference for the foundation of these churches through the preaching of St. Paul, which still flourish to this day. And then we see, unfortunately, Philippi doesn't flourish to this day because it got destroyed by the Ottoman Empire in the 14th century. 
but you can still see the ruins of that city, which used to be extremely prosperous because of gold mines and because it was on a great route of trade. But the church still stands, even though the city doesn't. And there are churches dedicated to St. Lydia all over the place in that area. But then our gospel reading. We see Jesus telling us, I, they will expel you from the synagogues. In fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God. And I really believe that we live in these times. I mean, this was definitely the times of St. Paul. But there are many people who think that they are good people when they persecute the church. Or that they are scientific and knowledgeable people when they downplay the faith. Or that they are being kind and nice when they persecute the teachings of the church, which in their minds are filled with hate and judgment. And I really believe that these times are coming more and more for us when people who look down on the Catholic Church think they're actually being good and dignified versus the opposite being true. And what do we do during these times? Well, we rely on the Spirit that Jesus is sending to us. And we rely on Jesus' prophecy. Because I have told you this, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you. You may remember that this is the way it's going to go down. And I think for each of us, we, we shouldn't assume persecution. We shouldn't go looking for it. But on the same side, we shouldn't be afraid of it. And we shouldn't try to avoid it. And that is my fear these days. That is really one of my fears of this whole virus and everything. Because I think... We live, in some ways, very much afraid. We don't think we should buck the system in any way. We shouldn't take any risks. But maybe we should. Now, I'm not talking about virus and health and safety and larger groups in church. That's not what I'm talking about. But I am talking about the undercurrent in our world these days, which is this real socialism that we can't go against anyone else's opinion. We can't say that anyone is wrong. We can't go against anyone's emotion because if we do, then we're a bigot or a racist or we're intolerant. But maybe we do need to go against some of the tolerances of our society these days. Maybe we need to look for that there is a higher truth instead of acting like there is no truth. And maybe it's okay to proclaim God in the public square even though it may offend a few people. See, that is a thing we really should be looking for and really doing. And I think for each of us, as God willing, we come back to a public celebration of the Mass in a couple of weeks, that we really will start to stand for this more and more and really look to it. You know, one thing that we started here in our communities is the Corpus Christi procession, which has been a, a very beautiful event the last couple of years. And I think it needs to be delayed because of the virus and everything. I don't think it needs to be delayed for a hugely long time, but it may be in the fall, not in, the, in June. But I think it's something that we definitely need to do. Because the Corpus Christi procession is really asking for God to heal our land, asking for God to be with us, but also making a public declaration of our faith and of our trust in Jesus, that we are followers of him. And I think that's what we need to be doing these next coming weeks, that we are followers of Jesus. There is every excuse in the book not to come to church in a couple of weeks. The bishop has dispensed us from coming. We don't have to come to receive the Eucharist. There's no obligation whatsoever. But also, the health thing. Also, the cultural thing. It's nice weather outside. I mean, there's going to be every excuse in the book not to come to church. And for some people, those are valid things that the Lord is calling them to, and no worries. But there is a lot of us who should be here and need to be here and need to be making those public declarations. Those of us who are not high risk of having the disease, those of us who really have no good excuse, need to be here. And God willing, that will happen. And God willing, there will be a rest and a new vigor in our faith, that we will recognize that Jesus has told these things to us ahead of time, and that we can imitate the example of St. Lydia, who went over and beyond faced public scandal and humiliation, was in an extremely precarious position being a woman in charge of our household and putting that on the line by allowing these Christians to come in. She didn't care. She didn't. Hence her title in the Orthodox Church, equal to the apostles. And I think, too, 
we need to take risks in the faith in order to evangelize. We don't take risks in crazy ways. We don't take risks in ways that are unwarranted. But we do take risks when it comes to preaching the gospel. We do take risks when it comes to living out the Ten Commandments. We do take risks in reaching out our hand to our brothers and sisters in faith, in invitation to their conversion. And for each of us to look for those opportunities and to live for that more and more is truly what Jesus is getting at when he talks about sending his Spirit to us. If we live by the Spirit, we live for heaven over earth. If we live for the Spirit, we are very eager to sacrifice for the good of the faith of a brother and sister in need. And let us offer our prayers and petitions. Pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities, that we will be faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those who are sick and suffering, especially those suffering from the effects of this virus. We pray for all those who will have hope, those who do not have faith, those who do not see the truth or live by the Spirit, that in these times they may truly come to a deeper conversion and healing in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray that as our bishops continue to lead us to a deeper sense of normalcy, that we may do so with great enthusiasm in the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, that they will know God's eternal love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to be ever more faithful to you, that we may truly recognize you in the practice of our faith. And in recognizing you, we may recognize your will as you call us to love one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to O Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy. These gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs. St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To the verse, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins by the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, O Lord, be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Extended to you as well. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. 
Look with kindness upon your people, o Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. In his wisdom he strengthens us like gold that's tested in fire. Though the power of sin prevails, our God is there to save. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. Have a good day, everybody.